Oh, hey there, people. How the frig's it going? Anyway, on the last video, we built this thing to hold the rods and keep them off the ground. But on today's video, I think we might make another lure. Now, I did mention on the last video that I got some stuff to make a lure, besides the stuff that we already used. Um, still got hooks and all that stuff from the last build. Trebles and shit. Uh, but, <laughs> anyway, I went to the dollar store to try and find the hooks for the uh, rod holder. And before I even had a chance to leave, I ended up finding a bunch of shit. So let me show you what we got here. So I've already shown these on the last video. I got some beads here, and these are actually for winter ice fishing sinkers. And some glitter, yeah glitter because uh this shit worked horrible i don't even know why they call it glue it's not glue all right well i bought some shot glasses this is actually for mixing you'll see also bought some popsicle sticks i guess or is that what these are called popsicle sticks coffee sticks whatever the stir stuff going into the shot glasses got some two-part five minute epoxy i've seen some people on the lure crafting forums use this to clear coat it takes five minutes to set simply squirt some into a cup that's where you add your glitter you add your glitter to it mix it around and then apply it to your bait with a brush or whatever i also saw these they're a uh, two bucks they're paint brush Markers, brush pens. Eh, I figure we'll give those a try. And they had other colors too, like the yellow, the green. I don't know, maybe we can try and make a perch color. Don't have an airbrush yet, guys. We gotta figure things out. I also bought a bunch of these kind of beads, which apparently came with line to make a necklace. I don't plan on doing that. This is gonna be also for either ice fishing or some sort of a jig building. I like those other beads better, they're heavier. And I bought a brush. A brush to apply the uh, epoxy with. I don't expect that brush to last, but hey, we'll give her a go. Anyway, I also found this for a dollar. It's, um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's like a holographic, like a shiny paper, but it's, it's self-adhesive. So it's like the, a sticker. You peel off the back and then you just freaking stick it on your, your item and boom, you have this. And I kind of like it because if you can see, it almost has that fish scale pattern to it. So what I figure is, I want to make a crankbait again, but this time I want to make it with a lip. And I'm thinking for the lip, we're going to try using this tin. We're going to cut a little piece out. We're going to fashion it to the, the bait. We're going to see if we can make that damn thing sink. All right, guys, we're uh, probably going to do a similar shape as the last one. So we're going to come up like that and make it a little bit big. Actually, I should make it really big. Let's make this one here to piss off the pike. Something like that, four and a half inches. I'm gonna give a little bit more belly to it. Okay, so I'm gonna take that jobby over to the scroll saw and we're gonna cut it out. Okay, let's get scrolling. that's the end of that blade shit that was loud oh man so we broke a blade to be expected we need a blade for this scroll saw so let me go and hunt around because i know i had some here somewhere i know someone came with the saw i just can't remember where the heck they ended up i'll be back kind of pissed off we're gonna have to take a rip over to canadian tire and the, what pisses me off is i was just in that area today because i honestly have no flipping idea where the heck the scroll saw blades are. I thought I got a bunch of them. I thought they were in a little case. I didn't fire the case in here when I was doing my garage cleanup. Well, this sucks. I really didn't want to have to go back out again. The whole idea was stay home, make some videos and have a good day. And go to Canadian Tire and get some freaking scroll saw blades. Alrighty, we're back. I got the blades. Um, I bought two packs. I bought these scroll saw blades and there's these other scroll saw blades which was pretty much what I had on there already. So I bought this four pack of nine teeth branch which was not what was on there but then my aunt had these ones on there 28 teeth branch 12 piece. Now I'm gonna hang on to these ones here for sure. I'm gonna try one of these because it says for one and a half, a half inch to one and a half inch and these ones here 
is one quarter to three quarter inch. And I'm not sure, I think that there might be an inch piece of wood. So I was probably really pushing my luck there. And the fact that I was able to cut out the last one was probably sheer luck. So I gotta go rock a piss and then we're gonna install a blade and get back to her. All right, we got another blade on it. I'm gonna go ahead and chop through the wood where I made my cut and it broke. Okay, pretty sure I did not put this blade on right. Sounds pretty noisy. Let me figure out with this and I'll be right back. All right guys, I just discovered something that I should have probably known. Um, this up here is a tensioner. So like right now, it's, there's a lot of slack, right? And if I press the pedal, Sounds like a Singer sewing machine and it's, it's warping my blade. But if you twist it the other way, it puts tension on the blade and she's beauty playing. Freak sakes, wish I would have known that. All right, let's see if we can chop out the rest of this lure. Where is it? There it is. that I ever missed the mark. Okay. All right, our really, really rough shape is done. I'm not sure if I want that to be the top or that to be the top I think I want that to be the top that'd be kind of neat have it swimming through the water okay this thing's done unplug it we learned something new about the scroll saw today that a lot of you probably already did know about but that's okay because uh, I learned by doing and not by being told the way she goes anyway let's go to the bandsaw all right let's try and give this stupid thing shape So something like that, that could be fun. Not sure how well that's coming through, but I drew in some angles that I'm gonna have the fish taper down to, and the bait I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand those down now. So we haven't rounded it off yet, but uh, that's basically the uh, gist of it. So um, what I need to do now is I need to figure out how I'm going to round this off and go from there. All right, so I managed to mark some lines of where I'm going to round it off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, I got a utility knife. I'm going to try and carve it out. So let's see how that works. All right, I changed my mind after doing some carving. It's not quite giving me the desired effect. I'm going to go back to the bandsaw. And by the bandsaw, I freaking mean the belt sander, and we're gonna get the edges on it that way. So we go for something like that. Not too bad, not too bad. 
little fishy. Doogie doogie doogie. <laughs> Alright guys, the next step is we need to make the wire hangers. So, I'm gonna do the old Allen key trick. You can use a nail too, you don't have to use an Allen key. You can use a finishing nail, a nail, whatever the hell you want. And we're gonna take our hobby wire here. This stuff here I found out if you don't even twist it, you just bend it to a U so you can get it into the drills chuck. Take your drill, take your project wire, stab it on in, tighten her down so she's super tight. Try and keep her somewhat straight. And then all you do is come over here, hook it on, and go slow. And then there you go. There's your, your hardware. I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple more of those. And we'll be good to go. All right guys, well I've already drilled a hole right in the face for the hook tie. So that's gonna go in there like that, maybe like that. And then underneath, I wanna have a, I wanna put the weight up front as much as possible. And then I wanna put a treble, a tre uh, probably two trebles underneath. I was like, should I put a treble on the back? I'm thinking if I put a treble underneath and a treble underneath, we might not need a rear treble. I don't know, three trebles is a lot for, a, 4.8 inch swim bait that's gonna deep dive because it's gonna be so freaking heavy. I don't know. I don't know. All right guys, so I'm thinking something like this. We have our line tie on the front, hook hanger, hook hanger. Nothing coming out the arse because I probably should though, eh? Uh, but I did put lead in the belly. I cut a split shot in half and threw it in there. I might put some more in there in the front just to make it front heavy so that when it sinks and then I pop it, it comes up and it does this. Uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So I'm gonna probably put a little bit more lead in the front and then super glue baking soda. All right guys, well I glued in the hook hangers. They're in there. I glued in the front hook uh, line tie and I super glued and baking soda the holes for the lead. Now. I don't care what anybody says, Gorilla Glue is not super glue, and I just found that out because the reaction that you normally get with super glue baking soda is awesome, and the reaction you get with super glue or with Gorilla Glue and baking soda is the Gorilla Glue literally sits on top of the baking soda and does nothing. I thought it was thinner than that, but it's obviously not a thin glue, it's obviously a thick glue. So, um, also for this bait, I'm not going to seal it like I did my other one. I sealed it in super glue. What I'm going to do with this one here is once it's said and done and everything's dried, I'm going to go ahead and paint it and we're going to actually seal it with epoxy. Epoxy resin. Well, that's the super glue leaking out of it because Gorilla Glue sucks. Hmm, fun. I don't know how long the super glue takes to set. We're going to leave it alone for a couple minutes and go from there. So I want to try and get it painted tonight or at least get it set tonight so we can get the epoxy on and let that start curing. Tomorrow, I don't know if we'll be able to test it out because I think it's gonna be raining tomorrow. And it would have been a good day to go fishing today now because it's been pretty sunny, but they're calling for rain. What time's it gonna to rain tonight? Tonight in North Bay, there's a moderate chance of scattered rain starting at about 10 p.m. Oh, that's not too bad. Theoretically, I could still go fishing. Hurry up and set, I wanna paint you. Well guys, I kinda of got ahead of myself and I already foiled the bait. Looks pretty good, I like it. So I'm gonna put black on the top and white on the belly. See how that works out. Guys, well I did the bottom. Looks like Melba toast. We're gonna go ahead and try the top. I'm gonna use this paint marker thing that I got from the dollar store. See how shitty this thing is. Oh yeah, that's garbage. Like, how do you make it throw more paint out? Like, is it doing it? You guys hear those kids screaming in the background? That is literally every day around here right now, ever since that new family moved in across the street. I love my neighborhood now. I feel like I live in the ghetto. Uh, it sort of worked, but I wanted the black to go down the sides. And this shitty marker, I don't know if you need to coax it into working or what, but it doesn't seem to want to write on the vinyl. That is the wood nice, but... Okay, we're gonna have to resort to what we were using before. The acrylic paint. Let me get this thing painted up. Alrighty, it's not the greatest, but wait for that to dry and then we'll five minute epoxy it. Let it cure overnight. Well, we'll let it cure in five minutes while we do this for five minutes. Gotta spin it. Maybe I'll find another way to hook it up to spin it 
Use a drill or something on a slow rotation just to make sure that it evenly spreads the gel coat and it doesn't turn out like poop 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 Yep, all day they were calling for rain and if you look at a little bit this morning, it's beauty. Let's see if tomorrow's accurate. Anyway, let's see how this bait is doing. All right, it's nice and dry. Nice and dry. See if I can ever get an airbrush, then the whole painting process will be a lot nicer. It won't look so gooey and ooey and stupid. It'll probably still look stupid. Who am I kidding? All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna coat this in that five minute epoxy, and then I gotta turn it nonstop for five minutes straight. And I just realized that I really have to pee. Because I don't wanna have to go into the house while I'm turning this, I'm gonna go ahead and lock this in the vise right now. Go for a piss, come back, and we're gonna paint it. Now, anybody who is a seasoned bait maker, master baiter, if you will, I know that the epoxy I'm using is probably not the best. There is better out there, but um, dollar store bait builds, boys. All right, so I'm gonna take my two-part epoxy, mix it in one of these shot glasses, stir in some, stir in some glitter, and then go from there. I'm over here all wanting to clear this, and I forgot the most important thing ever. Where the frig are the eyeballs? I don't know if you can see the tip of that brush, but she's pretty sparkly, because I really went to town on the sparkles with the glitter. Look at this friggin' thing. Look at how, look at that back. I'm gonna bling bling money in a thing that is. Holy crap. So we're just gonna let it drip dry on the floor here. Don't wanna get too close, cause whole lay. Yeah, she's pooping. She's having some poops. So we'll let that do its curing process overnight. And then tomorrow we'll hook some hook hangers onto it. A couple trebles and then uh, depending on the weather, I'm gonna have to drill out some hook hanging holes here. But depending on the weather, we'll take it down to the beach and uh, We'll check it out there and just see what kind of nonsense we can attract. It looks stupid. Second bait. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Well, it's the morning thereafter. We got 29 kilometer an hour winds coming from the south. And as you can see, they've already knocked over my garbage cans. And she's pretty windy right now. However, I let the bait cure overnight. I checked on it last night and it was good enough to take off of the uh, off the uh, vice grips so there she be not the prettiest thing pretty much the same paint scheme I used on the last one because I'm limited on paints um, if I ever get an airbrush I keep saying that uh, Walmart actually has some really nice paints they even have one with a color shift in it that would be really cool to make a lure out of but I have a feeling that I've started the lure making game too late in the season because um, Northern Ontario is already pretty much under snow. Uh, they got bombarded last night with about 10 to 15 centimeters and I'm pretty sure my super glue is now a rock solid mess, yes. Well, that's awesome. I left the Gorilla Glue open overnight and well, somehow, wait a second, wait a second. It's still flowing. It must have, I might just need a pin or something, ram it through the uh, the nozzle to break off, whatever, try it up in there. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do, oh yeah, Northern Ontario is under snow. They got bombarded with 10 to 15 centimeters last night, so uh, we're going to get it soon, which means this garage is about to become home to the car, which means everything I have down here, I need to get out of the way and get the car in here, either today or tomorrow. Um, but as for this, this is fully cured and ready to go. I'm gonna put some hooks on the hangers and then uh, I'll chime back in. Got the eyeballs on there, derpy as all hell. Should be a pretty interesting little bait. We'll go see, uh, we'll take it down to the lake and see if we can throw it in and see how we can see. All right guys, well on my second attempt, I just realized something that I may have put the hook hangers too close together because uh, they're totally gonna catch each other. Yeah. Oh well, let's uh, go ahead and head down to the lake. I think it's not raining right now. Looks pretty dry out there. It's a little windy, but uh, we'll see if we can catch. Well, we'll see how this thing has action. We're not going to catch a fish. <laughs> my homemade crankbait, my homemade jerkbait. Side by each, two by twice. Look at them. They're so cute. How to get that thumbnail. Let's uh, jump in the truck and head down to the lake. All right, guys, we're down here at the lake. No idea how this is going to perform, but we're going to give her a dangle and see. So let's go ahead here, lock the truck, vent any B&Es. Let's get down to the dock. I came here a while ago on my bike. It was like after five fishing or work was done. And I came down here and I gave her a dangle and she was pretty weedy. Uh, I brought a little tackle box with me. I don't have it on me right now, but uh, Oh, cool. That little snack bar over there. I guess when COVID's over, looks like they're building a new playground here, but when COVID's over, you can actually rent little kayaks over there. I wonder if that dock is usable. 
Uh, we'll just go down here to the boat launch and we'll cast out and see how she performs. Get an idea. I got uh, the GoPro on as you can tell, so let's switch over to that view. Yeah guys, if you remember when I came down here on my bike, I literally came up here with the bike, parked it on this dock here, and then just disembarked and sat, sat over at the end here and just fished. Now I'm not sure how good it's going to be. We got some uh, Cobra Death chickens over here just enjoying the water. It is kind of shallow here. And I will admit, looking into the water, I do not see any bait fish nearby, so not a big deal. This isn't really a, a fish to catch fish run. The only thing I do catch is just going back anyway. This is a, let's see how well this thing works. First off, does it sink? No, it floats. Let's go ahead and drop her in. And we'll just pull it along. Huh. Okay, so she pulls straight. That's great. Zero action. Well, it's got a little bit of a wobble to it. Well, let's send it out there and hope that line tie hangs on. Oh yeah, she got a little bit of a wobble. Okay, she spins a little bit, but... All right, let's send it right where, way out there. It's acting like a dead fish. I don't know if you can see it out there. You should be able to. It's not as good as the other crankbait I made. But it's all right. I don't know, I got a lot more work to do to become a good bait maker, that's for sure. A lot of work to do. Presentation's one thing, but function is the other. I'm gonna go over to the other dock over there and just see what we can do. I don't think there's any fish here today. Like I said, this is just me coming out to test out my my bait to see how well it works for the video. The other bait video hasn't even come out yet, so I don't even know how you guys like these, if you do or anything, so I guess we'll find out in the very near future whenever the bait video comes out of the crankbait. Next year will be a, a great year for fishing. Yeah, this thing totally acts like a dead fish. Oh, Someone come to launch a boat or something. Pick up a boat. Or just drive around with a trailer. Oh, I think I just hooked my line. Gotta get that back in sail it across the top like I do when I catch a bass on this thing. Yeah, I caught my line. Oh, shit. I didn't even realize there was scuba gear out there. Alright, last cast.
Alrighty guys, so there you go, the homemade uh, dead fish bait. Sure, I don't even know what the hell to call it. Uh, just another one that I, I got a lot to do to perfect my, my styles. I think the main problem is, is my clear coats. Clear coats are kind of bunk. You know what? I'll talk more when I'm in the truck. This wind is probably just talking over the audio. All right, guys, I think the, um, I'm home now. <laughs> uh, the main problems with this is number one, my finish. Uh, didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. Uh, the two-part epoxy from the dollar store is obviously not the greatest solution. Should've got a thinner epoxy and that would've solved the problem. Now, Michaels carries a product that a lot of classic bait makers used to finish off their, their lures. I was gonna go pick some up, but I didn't feel like spending that much money on this just yet. I feel like if I'm gonna spend good money on a clear coat, I'll do it when I'm ready to spend good money on a paint job. And right now, neither one of those is, is at that time, so. As far as making the shapes and making them smooth and good to go, I got that down to a science. I'm okay there. Probably could, you know, get a little bit more on my technique, but with the scroll saw, the, the belt sander, hand sanding, whittling, you know, carving, whatever. I think uh, we're pretty good for making the shapes we want. It's just getting some sort of a, a paint scheme on it and making it look appealing and then finalizing it to give it endurance. That's where we're falling apart. So I definitely want an airbrush so I can apply paint without brush strokes. I can apply it nicely, thin coats. And for the... Clear coat, well there's uh, Marling Bates uses some UV clear coat. I looked it up, I can't find it in town. A couple guys online that use this stuff. Uh, I can't remember the name of it just now, but Michaels carries it and it's a two part finish. And it's designed like if you make a wooden table, you literally pour it over top of the table and then use like, um, like a plastic spreader to spread it around evenly. And it'll auto level, which is nice. And then it dries like epoxy resin hard and it gives your wood this like clear, thick, freaking finish it would take a lot to get through that clear coat to get to the wood and harm the wood so that's what i was thinking that i was gonna get until i saw the price and was like ah you know what just for a fun little little fall bait that probably won't work let's just keep our dollar store and we'll have some fun with it and that's what we did and <laughs> this bait doesn't even fit in the daggle box that's hilarious oh boy oh yeah it does okay so i'm gonna chuck it in here with all my other weird baits so I'll show you the weird bait bin. We got homemade dead fish jerk bait, homemade lipless crankbait, a bunch of other weird things. I don't know who makes this thing, but I think I bought it on the clearance wall at um, that fish shop, the out, uh, uh, Outfitters. And it was pretty cheap. Like, it's a lot smaller than my crankbait. But to be fair, that's pretty much, if you look at my crankbait, you look at the other one, you look at the paint job on it, that's pretty much what I was aiming for. Like, a professional, junior kindergarten, you know? But, but I think with an airbrush, we could probably pull off a better paint scheme. And as far as the scale pattern goes, that's what made me think when I got this tin foil. I was like, oh, that kind of looks like a scale, but probably shouldn't have came so high with the white. Ah, oh, whatever. But that's why I painted the belly of this one red, is because look at the belly of that one, it's red. But I should have put more... Ah, oh, it's fine. It's all good. But I wanted to fish with this one here, because I think this here might catch some, like, sunfish and little panfish. And that'd be kind of fun to try and catch them little bastards. They're always a, they're always a hoot to catch, the little doinks. Because they put up such a big fight for such a little fish. And they make such a big deal out of it, too. It's so funny. But anyway, guys. Yet another bait video for you. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. If you did, you know what to do, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. Looks like uh, fishing season is definitely coming to an end. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of today, uh, up north from us, like Sault Ste. Marie, Marathon, Wawa, them, they've all got bombarded with snow, which means we're next. Probably sometime this week, which means I need to get the rest of this shit out of the way so I can get that Trans Am in here, which means this shop will be off limits for making baits and doing other things. I'll have very limited space in here to walk around, so. Yeah, should be freaking fun. Winter's coming. The white fans are butts about it. 
Winter also means it's gonna be rough for me making videos, so I don't know how the hell I'm gonna pull that off. Do I go back to daily vlogging? Do I just make videos of whatever? I don't know. We're gonna see what we can do and do what we can see. And in the end, we just gotta push through till about March, April. Actually, we gotta push through till about end of May, because that's when fishing season opens back up. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can get out there on the uh, the waters and go and catch some guppies. So that's pretty much all I have for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. And until next time, guys, remember, live to win, never give in. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.